Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. I'm so excited to share this episode with you. It has been brewing in my heart, in my mind, and all of me for a while. And today we are going to talk about why women empowering women is so important, and also just women rising up in the world in their own empowerment, and how can we support each other on this. So this is dedicated to all the amazing women in the world that are in my life, and everyone who's listening, and also I very much feel it is so important for men to listen to this, so that they can understand how it feels for us, and also be part of the co-creation of this new earth vibration that we are all creating and we have to understand where we're coming from in order to integrate it in order to create something beautiful and new because if we do not look at history or her story if we do not integrate where we have come from we are only going to recreate it unconsciously in the future so I have been organizing like pretty much since I got out of my religion I've been doing whatever I can to empower w the women in my life. I was raised with two sisters. Two, they were two years older and two years younger. So I was the middle and my mother and then my dad. So mostly women in my house. And my sisters and I always shared clothes. And, you know, I, I didn't realize how deep in sisterhood I was growing up because sometimes it felt so overwhelming, the amount of feminine energy in my house, that all I really wanted to do was be in my own energy. Uh, but now looking back, I'm so grateful for it. And I'm so grateful for my sisters and the experience that we had and our just beingness together and how much we loved sharing our lives together and growing up together. And when I got out of my religion and felt free and empowered within myself, I realized how much um, women were suppressed in my upbringing. And seeing that and like being in that on like a very embodiment level like feeling that in my body and going through that on a personal level just really showed to me how important it was to like my immediate reaction to that was how do I empower like any woman that comes into my life so I really view every single woman that comes into my vortex as a sister and by that and what I mean by that is someone who is on my level someone who uh, I can show up for that can show up for me like a co-creator in my world and someone who I feel very protective over like if you are a woman who are, is in my life you know that I'm very protective over women I was just at a festival last week in Portugal and there was a lot of times during the festival where uh, there was something going on like a man was coming up to a woman and hitting on her and and I just like couldn't tell if she felt safe. And I would just go stand near the situation. And one time I even said, I just walked up to her and ignored the guys. And I was just like, are you okay? Do you need help? And she was like, oh, I I'm actually okay, but thank you so much. And then the guy turned to me and he was like, wow, thank you so much. Like, I just want to honor what you just did because you don't even know her. And like, so all around, everyone was just like, wow, thank you for showing up for women. And I'm like, this is just who I am. This is just what I do. And it's so important for me to do this. And like, when I moved to Asia, originally back in 2016, I was like, I want to organize a women's festival. And I ended up organizing this, this fest, this one day festival with over, I think, 400 people that came and it was completely run and organized by women. So me and all my girlfriends, there's like 10 of us. We were on the board and we co-created this beautiful day together where there was um, speakers. There were all women. There was um, lots of workshops happening, yoga, dance. We had um, women DJs. We had women who were bringing their things to sell, things that they made and food and and but everyone was welcome to come men and women of and everyone of every gender was welcome to come but i was like making the statement especially in asia where women are not necessarily um able or programmed to have the freedom to lead i was like we are leading this together and it was so beautiful and it got in the news and you know it was like it was uh, sponsored by the city of chiang mai so it was like it was really it was really making a statement and this is something I've always wanted to do and and as I travel around the world I have created women's circles and different women's events 
um, to bring women together, to get a sharing together. And I've had a lot of people ask me recently, like, why do you do this? Like, you have your crew, you have your women that you love, your best friends. Like, why do you keep giving to other women? And I'm like, because we all should do this. Like, that's my immediate reaction is like, why isn't everyone doing this for each other? Like, where I come from, my mom was always helping the women in our religion and like our community. And my sisters were always showing up for people. I really felt that... my camera is falling over. I really felt that it was just something that you do. Like you show up for each other. And then I went out in the world and I realized, oh, not everyone is like this. Or maybe not everyone has been shown that this is a possibility. And so this is what this podcast is about is like, why is this important? Like, why do I feel that it's so important for women to show up for each other? Um, And also how we can keep doing this more with the goal to keep empowering ourselves. So, if you've listened to any of my podcasts, you know that like I grew up in an environment where women were programmed to be silent, to be pretty, to wait for space to be opened for them in order to speak. Like it literally, if you've watched Handmaid's Tale or any sort of dystopian novel of, where women are suppressed, like that is the way I was raised. And I, when I left my religion, I thought, oh, that programming has gone. You know, like I'm super empowered. I'm following my power. In a lot of ways I was, I was like doing things in the world, but there was still a lot of this programming in me. And I noticed it when I got into relationships where I would be in a relationship with a man that I loved very much and who loved me very much, but I wasn't taking up space in my own life and I wasn't taking up space in the relationship. And this could be in the form of like actually saying what I wanted and speaking my desires or if something didn't feel good in my body that was happening like speaking up for that I was just kind of like going along with whatever was happening in the relationship and letting the man lead and as I started speaking to more women I realized that my religion was a very extreme version of this programming but the world itself is set up in a broader spectrum of this. So it might not be as extreme, but this programming runs through almost everyone. And it's being looked at right now. You can see it in the way that the world is shifting and the way there's a lot more women empowerment, a lot more, but a lot of it's coming out as like very aggressive and very angry because there's a lot of suppression over many centuries, thousands of years that have happened and women are fucking tired of it. We are like, let's wake up, let's let's shift this. But why did, why is this like this? Um, and what I noticed, like the major programming that is underlying a lot of this, and I would love for you to feel into this and let me know what you think. I always ask everyone to message me on Instagram if you resonate with any of these podcasts or if you have your own experiences. I love hearing them. The thing that like came to me in a meditation the other day was, because I was like really frustrated about something in my relationship and it had nothing to do with my boyfriend. It was like my, how I was showing up and I was like, what is going, why am I not feeling like I'm honoring myself and how I'm showing up? And what I noticed was that a lot of women, myself included, have lived most of their lives, their upbringing as not the main characters in their own lives. So what does that mean? It's like we go along in our lives waiting for someone to notice us and waiting for someone to bring us to life of like like I hope they just know what I want and I hope they help me you know make my dreams come true instead of doing what I want and I figured out how to do this as a single person so when I am on my own and not in a relationship, I was very able to figure out what I wanted and figure out my desires and really go after it. And what I struggled with was when I was in a relationship and my mentors would say this to me, they're like, Brittany, whenever you're single, you're like, you know, launching a new business. Things are like anything you touch turns to gold in the sense that I was making so much money, like traveling all over the world, doing whatever I wanted. And like people, you know, anything I organized, hundreds of people would come. But when I get in a relationship, it was like I make myself small and I would wait for my partner to decide what, how he wanted to live his life. And then I would like support him on whatever he was doing. And I remember... One of my past relationships, I was, I was like, I had just like launched this amazing company and everything was going really successful. And then I started dating him. And then he was like, I'm a relationship coach for men. And I just like 
stopped what I was doing, moved into this beautiful big house with him, and then helped him find people to be on his podcast and like that was my existence at that moment and I was like what the fuck and then I woke up to it one day and I was like what am I doing like I was no longer a main character in my life I was like waiting for him to make a decision on what how what we were going to do in our lives and I was still like doing what I wanted but within a a lot more I would say like a muted version of me like not the fully expressed Britney I was like the Britney in a relationship And I did not feel like a main character in my own life. And this has been a reoccurring theme. And it's like, I didn't realize this was happening. So the pattern would be that I would be fully expressed on my own. But then I love love being in love. And I love being with a partner and co-creating our lives together. But then when I would get with someone and I start dating them, I would give up a lot of my power. And they wouldn't even ask me to. I was picking really amazing men most of the time. And... But I was giving up a lot of my own power and just like, you know, muting my own desires, not speaking up for what I wanted, like literally sometimes just stopping what I was working on on my business or projects I was working on and just helping them with their projects. And this is so much programming we have as women to be like the supporter role, the nurturing, the caring, um, and, and and also just to silence ourselves, to silence our, our active life force, which is like whatever turns us on in our lives. I'm not even saying from a sexual standpoint. I mean, like whatever makes life worth living, like whatever brings pleasure to us in any form and just kind of like stopping all of that unless the man in our life brought it to us and then like appreciating them for bringing it to us and then like not doing it for ourselves you know and not having them give it to us out of abundance like I already am good in my life and thank you for giving me even more amazing pleasure and goodness and this is like hard to speak to about because you know for a long time I didn't want to face this part of myself because I felt so empowered and and I really have gotten so far in my life compared to where I come from most people do not get out of the situation that I come from and if they do they're very damaged and their trauma follows them throughout their whole life but I was like I do not want to just survive in my life I fucking want to thrive in my life and so this has been the standard that I have set for myself and so this was one more part of myself that I need to integrate Um, if you've ever heard of anything called shadow work it's like the parts of ourselves that we have made unconscious that we don't want to look at and bringing them into consciousness and like integrating these parts of ourselves. So shadow work is so important because this helps us become more of a complete version of ourselves so we can actually understand who we are, what we desire and go after it in our lives and be fully expressed. And so for me, this was some shadow work I really needed to work on and look at and integrate. And I feel like I have over the last couple of years and especially... And it was like, I felt like I was integrating it. And then I would date someone new and it would come up again. And then over the last couple of relationships, I was like, no, this is who I am. This is what I want. And does this person meet my needs? Does this person meet my standards? Is this person helping me be supporting me being my fully expressed self? Just like I'm automatically doing for them. This is the thing is I was automatically doing this for all the beautiful men in my life. But they didn't do it for me they didn't know how to do it for me they didn't want to do it for me I don't know I'm not putting any of this on them I'm just saying it didn't happen and then I and I also at the same time was not allowing myself to do it like showing up and just being it around them so it was like both things were happening at once and I think this happens for a lot of women and I see also on the the other side of it like a lot of women um going the other extreme where they're like they're going more like they're like I have to shout to be heard and just getting really angry and and just being like I'm going to be more in my masculine and I'm like okay that's fine I have done that also and I'm going to go more into that in this podcast but I don't it doesn't really feel good in my body to do it like that like I refuse to I've said this before in other podcasts but I refuse to shout to be heard I don't feel that I have to be angry and loud and dominant in order to be fully expressed like I feel like I can like because that's not natural for me that might be natural for any other woman and I open up space for that and I honor that but for me I realized 
it took a lot of energy for me to be like forceful in my if like needing to be fully expressed and having to force myself to create like space around me. Like I was like, I choose to be in a reality where that space is there. And any person that I interact with anyone who I'm dating, they also create that space for me and support that and remind me of my power when I'm on days where I don't feel so powerful or when my programming comes up and I'm like, Ooh, I'm just giving up my power without realizing it. They're like, no, no, no. Here's your power. Remember your power. Go after the things you love and all of that. And that's how I am in my current relationship. And I'm so grateful for Faraday in that because I feel that we really complement each other in that. And, the, and he really meets my standards of the supportive partner that I choose to have in my life. So why do we, why are we coming to this? Like a, a lot of people, uh, I want to go back and back up a little bit and talk about the macro level. So that means like the worldwide bigger picture that's happening. And we are so I'll say first that when you're born, you are choosing to buy into what we call mass consciousness. So this is like whatever the view the views of the world are currently going through, like, you know, back in the day it was like <laughs> in the 1600s or before that like, they were like the world is flat and it was like if you believe the world is round, you might get killed. So like that was the mass consciousness at that time. Right now, we live in a predominantly masculine energy run mass consciousness. So like the world itself, the energy of the way that humanity is in the earth right now, on the earth right now, is very masculine driven. So what does that mean? We all have masculine and feminine energy inside each of us. And when we talk about divine union, if you're if you're going more into spirituality and evolving your consciousness, you'll hear this term come up of like divine union. A lot of people want to find divine union outside of themselves. So they want to find an equivalent of themselves outside, like, you know, in their partner and have this divine union. But first, before you do that, you have to have divine union within your own masculine and feminine energies. So that means that your masculine and your feminine energies, whether you're a male or female or any gender, is balanced within yourself. So that's very important to say. But in the world we have like it's so we do not have divine union in a conscious the mass consciousness level like the world is not balanced in its masculine and feminine energy which it can be that is what we're going for that is a new earth vibration right now you will notice that the world is more in masculine energy because it looks like the mental is way like our mental cognitive function is way more praised like you know, you see this in the school system, like whatever people are thinking, if you're getting good grades, everything like that is what if you're really good at doing things. So like doing is the most important. How much can you get done in the world? How much can you get done in the day? How much can you get done on your to do list? That is very masculine energy. Masculine energy is doing things in the 3D, like creating things in the 3D. And it's beautiful. Women, we also have masculine energy in us, but the world is putting on a pedestal that that is the most important thing. And also masculine energy in the mass consciousness level means less emotional range. So that means like their emotions are just not as important. And we try to shove as a mass conscious level, like on a worldwide societal level, we shove down our emotions. So you see this in business, you see this in religion, society, pretty much everywhere. And they're like emotions, there's less range of emotions. It's like you're either angry or you're happy. And there's not much in between. And it's not, it's not really like explored. Like, oh, how are you feeling? Okay, let's like really dive into this and like see the range. Like how deep can we go into this emotional process? It's like, no, no, no. I'm going to try and put my emotions in a box and make them go away so that I can do more things in the world. So that's very masculine driven. And also... The masculine is very individualistic, which is is beautiful. Again, we need both of this inside of us. The the masculine is very like, this is mine and this is my country. These are my people. This is my land. Do not touch it. This is mine. This is my money. I don't care how many people I have to fuck over to get more money or how much nature I have to destroy or how much earth. I don't care if the whole earth is going through like the worst climate change and we're like really polluting everything because individually I'm getting more things. So that's very masculine driven. It's not thinking of other people. 
So the feminine energy, if we were to be more balanced in our feminine energy as a mass consciousness level, this would be more about being, like enjoy understanding that the journey is the destination. Like it is important to feel good in our bodies all the way through, no matter what we're doing. And if we don't feel good, to stop and look at it and integrate it until we actually feel good. It also has a full emotional range. Like the feminine is very much like whatever I'm feeling in my emotions is, is accepted and loved and honored and I'm going to enjoy all of it. I don't care how deep into the darkness of my emotions I'm going. It's beautiful. There's things to learn. I don't care how bu- how up in my emotions I'm going. Uh, it's also beautiful and accepted. Like the full range is is accepted and it's beautiful and it's honored and it's like it's invited and encouraged. It's like, let's go more into this. Yes, you have emotions. Awesome. Let's talk about that. Like, what can we learn? Knowing that there is something to learn in all of our emotions. Also, the feminine energy is co-creation, collaboration, understanding that we are not just our individual parts. We are all one human race together. We are all one beautiful organism that is moving in the same direction. And if we don't move in the same direction, then there's going to be consequences. If we don't take care of our earth, there's going to be consequences. And it's very taking, yeah, it's it's nurturing energy. It's like understanding that the more that we nurture ourselves, the more that we take care of the earth, like the more that we take care of each other, all of this is beautiful because it's creating a beautiful future and a beautiful beingness it's like it feels good in our bodies because we're all feeling good in our bodies and we're all creating this amazing earth and environment and bubble of energy so I'm speaking on the mass consciousness level but all of us have this in us and so this is like that's like the macro so that's a bigger picture but on the micro on the smaller picture individually in each of our lives this is this is what we see we see like people praising shoving down their emotions and doing things and you know how much can they get done and how much money can they make and how much success can they have and the feminine energy is not praised it's like shoved down and it's it's like made fun of if you have emotions or if you care about things. And then you see this in school. It's like it starts with our school programming. It starts with our even our religion. I, the religion I was raised in was not accepting of emotions. It was like praise to shove down your emotions and suffer. It was like literally suffer for Christ, you know, and like sacrifice your life for our, your religion. Um, so hold on. I'm just I want to move out of the sun. If you're watching this visually, you see that I'm very directly in the sun now. And my skin is way too white for this. So hold on one second. So the question is, how does this play out when we are in our everyday lives? So, I mean, I see a lot of women play the game of the masculine world, myself included. Um, You know, I went into law because I was like, this is what it means to be successful in this world. This is what it means to make money and protect myself. And I really did it subconsciously because I was like, I need to survive in the world. And I know that when I leave my religion, I'm not going to have family support. And so I need to be able to like pay money and support myself. But in order to do that, I had to be more in my masculine. Like it was like, you know, in a law firm, emotions are like the farthest thing away from being celebrated. It's like, how much can we get money out of these people and what's the loophole that we can find and and like it's very individual individualistic excuse me it's very individualistic on what what we are looking for and what we want it's like how much money can we make how can we screw these people over but in a nice way because it's legal and like all this stuff so I see a lot of women, a lot of my friends who I have especially a lot of my friends who I've met on the island who have had very big corporate jobs and they've had to shove down their emotions. They've had to basically be very in their masculine energy and kind of just become like a man and just like work really hard and do things and da 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 da. And a lot of them liked it for a while. Like I liked I liked my job for a while. 
um, in the sense that it was like intellectually stimulating. I have a huge, I have a, we all have masculine energy in us and I have a huge intellectual side of myself that finds these things really fascinating. And then I hit this wall of like, I don't like the beingness of this. I don't like going into this job every day where everyone you can tell is so constricted in their emotions and they're not actually like alive in their lives. And I don't care how much money I'm making. Like this is not worth it. I don't feel like this is worth being alive for. And I was getting super depressed. And a lot of my friends have similar stories where they're just like, their bodies started telling them, like they started getting a lot of illnesses and sickness and stress and they were on antidepressants. And they were just like, I just didn't want to do it anymore. And I didn't know how to get out of it. And then they're, they kind of, a lot of them had burnt, they call it burnout, where they just couldn't handle it anymore. And they had to leave and then go to Koh Phan Yang and heal and then figure out how to be in the world from that vibration. So I see a lot of women realizing that they're denying this part of ourselves that makes life worth living, which is whatever brings us pleasure, whatever turns us on. And a lot of this is our emotions. And it's like the things that we that we care about which is like the beautiful things in the world and and we can also be really good at business but it needs to be in a way that feels good in our bodies like I'm an amazing business person and and I love I love building businesses that are like good from like feel good in my body and like I feel that are like soul resonating with me like they're like something that I feel is making the world a better place like my soul is calling to this And I'm able to do it in a way that feels good in my body. And for me, that is the balance of, that is divine union within myself from a business perspective of like balancing my masculine and my feminine energy. But in the current world, we are accepted and praised for like, so if you look at like women in the current world, a lot of us women are very accepted and praised for our positive emotions. And I saw this a lot in the men that I was dating over the years where they were like, oh, I love it when you're around and you're, you're in such a good mood and you're, ma- you know, and you're making the house beautiful and you're just like p- kind of sprinkling your fairy magic everywhere, your mermaid fairy magic. And you're just like, you know, like my sexy beingness was just all around. But whenever I was in a negative emotion or I like to call it an unhappy emotion, anything that's not happy, it was suddenly they were, I felt this, this like frozenness in them of like, I don't know how to handle this like putting their hand up and the kind of like emotionally pushing me away. Like you go figure that out. And then I just come back to me when you're happy. Like that was the vibe that I got. And I was like, why are women only accepted in our positive emotions? And this is why you see so many women frozen today because they have some negative emotions, quote unquote negative, because I don't feel like anything's negative, but maybe just darker emotions, like going into the darkness of the shadow side and pulling out things that were unconscious and making them conscious. And this is a beautiful cycle that women have. We're very connected to the cycles of the earth, the co- cycles of our consciousness. Everything is one. Everything is connected. The cycles of the earth, the cycles of our period, the cycles of the mass consciousness, they are all the same thing. And women are so intuitively connected to this and we've been encouraged to disconnect from this. And what happens is we get frozen, we get depressed, we feel numb, and then we're with men who are like, be happy and let's have sex all the time. Why don't you feel turned on? Like I have so many women in my life that I had to work with them when I was coaching them and I loved working with them. But it was to help them feel more alive and to realize that their pleasure is what it comes first, not the pleasure of their partner, not who, whatever their job wants them to do. It's like, what brings life to you? What makes you feel turned on? And then everything else blossoms from there. We are the muse. Women, we are the 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 birthplace of life like we literally give life to the world from a physical standpoint but also from an energetic and an emotional standpoint and in order to do this we have to allow ourselves to go through the birth and the death cycles of our emotions because this is what we are doing we're literally cleaning out every every energetic field that we're connected to we are cleaning that out energetically and emotionally through allowing ourselves to feel the emotions and this is something I've said to Faraday a lot I'm like 
sometimes I feel like I'm feeling the emotions of the world and I'm like just cycling them through my body. And I've talked to a lot of my women friends, especially on Copanyon, because we're so allowing ourselves to be connected to this mass consciousness energy. And they're also saying the same things. They're like, yeah, like I'm just feeling sometimes like I'm crying all day long. I don't even know why I'm crying. And I just feel like I'm cycling things through my body. And it's beautiful. This is what we are here for. This is what brings us life. Like this is the spice of it, you know, because otherwise, you know, we would just be on, as Verity likes to call it, I'm like on point. Like everything in my life is, is perfect and everything is there. And he says, he's like, I realize that you bring the spice, like the beautiful, um, feminine chaos, which is the the positive energy and also the dark, un- going into the shadow side energy. And all of this is the spice of life. And this is why we are so powerful. This is the thing that connects us to our power. So when we allow ourselves to feel our full range of emotion, we are also allowing ourselves to fully step into our power. You will never be able to step into your full power as a woman unless you allow yourself to feel your full range of emotion. Just like really want to let that set, set in. You will never be able to step into your full power until you connect to your body, connect to your emotions, and allow yourself to have the space to go through all of the emotions, anything that comes up, and accept them, love them, and learn what they are trying to teach you. We are these wise beautiful otherworldly creatures that are here bestowing ourselves on this planet to help the collective to help ourselves to help our community to help our partners through our intuition through going through these cycles through allowing ourselves to connect to our bodies and trusting our bodies trusting our intuitions and what they're telling them there are so many times in my life where I just intuitively knew I could feel it in my body that something wasn't right in a situation. And I learned, I listened to it. I didn't care if anyone else was going to listen to me, but I was going to like bounce or I was going to do whatever I needed to do to make myself feel safe in that environment. And now that Faraday and I are together, I feel safe to share a lot of these things with him. And, and he, so he's starting to witness this. He's like, you know, I'll say something doesn't feel right with this person or I don't like the situation. And I'm just like, I'm going to go. You can stay if you want to. And then, you know, sometimes in the beginning of our relationship, he was like, I'm fine. You know, like I'm okay. You know, and he was letting it play out. And then he'd come back to me and be like, oh yeah, you're right. And he also has his intuitions and I love listening to them, but there's some, like his intuitions are a lot more logical and uh, he can channel people, you know, and like really see through people. But sometimes with my intuitions, I can't necessarily put it into words. It's not logical. It's not from the mind. It's from the emotions. It's from my womb. It's from my intuitive feminine energy. And this is also beautiful. This is just as powerful, if not more powerful than our mental reasoning. And this is something that I think is very important for people to understand. Because if we all understood this, then the world would be a very different place. And it would be a lot happier place. It would be a lot more dropped into our bodies and juicy and yummy. And everyone would feel good. And we would take care of the earth more. And we would take care of each other more. So I invite you, all of everyone who's listening to this, but especially women, to trust your intuition. Trust your connection to your body. And the reason why I started these women's circles and any sort of women-related events, like sometimes I host women's medicine ceremonies, sometimes I do a women's retreats, sometimes I do women's festivals, whatever it is, it's because I know that many women have what we call a sisterhood or a motherhood wound. So what does that mean? Well, that means that in today's world, so there isn't that much space for women in today's masculine driven world. And so for instance, if you're in a a workplace, And you like, for instance, in my law firm, I was one of the only women. There was probably 30 men and three women in my law firm. And the other women in my law firm were like the secretaries. Like I was like the only one who was like practicing law. And, and like, so (laughs) in these situations, it's very normal in the past. I think people are coming out of it now, but in the past for women to feel that there isn't enough space, like there's only one spot for women in this job, in this law firm, and I'm going to get it. And so they become very competitive with each other instead of looking at each other as like, how can we band together and rise up 
more, they start stepping on each other energetically, emotionally, and, you know, like in the way that they do things in the world. And you also see this in relationships. It's like um, women who are not fully in their power, they're like, I see a man that I want. And then they see that there's another woman who wants that guy at the same time. And they start competing with each other instead of being like, hey, we're sisters in this. Do you like him? Can can we share information? This is something that I, I thought I had healed. And then on the island, I very much healed. And it was like so beautiful because there was times on the island when I wasn't dating anyone and we had a group of friends and there was like you know it was very like conscious but also very casual in the way that everyone was connecting to each other and sleeping with each other but the women all of us women knew who was sleeping with whom and we all talked about it to each other and we all supported each other on it and if there was someone who got more of an emotional attachment and wanted to date that man the rest of us would be like we honor that do you want us to step back like it was so pow- empowering and so powerful because we were connected to each other on it and what i noticed is when i do these women's circles it's such a beautiful space for women to connect to each other and allow ourselves to fully feel our full range of emotion and step into our power because we are the ones who can host each other in our full range of emotion the most because we are the ones who have the full range of emotion. So for instance, one of the things that I have us do in our women's circles that has been very successful and very popular I learned it from an amazing woman called Mama Gina who has a school of womanly arts. She also does empowerment stuff in the States for like 30 years. She's in her 60s and she calls it swamping. So it's you sit in front of each other and you host each other emoting. So you host each other in shadow work. And I put a timer on and I explain it very clearly. And I'm like every single person, myself included, is going to do this exercise. If you don't feel comfortable doing it, you can step out and just witness and honor it and watch everyone always like as far as I've done them so far have always joined and you get a pillow and you get some like tools and you can just emote literally anything and the person who is across from you your partner north they witness you by honoring they just like watch and they host you in it and they're in a meditative state and they don't need to do anything they just witness you and hold space for you and I put on meditative music and everyone is like screaming in the pillows, banging things, making as much noise, emoting, laughing, crying. And you notice at first when this happens, like the first time I could tell the first time someone does it because they're like so frozen. They're like, is this allowed? Is this crazy? My programming is really coming up hard on this. I have never been able to be, I have a lot of them come up to me after and say, I've never been in a space where it was safe to actually emote and actually f- express my feelings knowing I will still be connected to the group, to the person afterwards. They feel like if they actually shared their emotions, they will, that equals disconnection. And, and then you see them there. They just, at the end of it, most of them are laughing. They're crying and laughing at the same time because they feel so fucking relieved. They feel so relieved to release all of these emotions. Sometimes they're emotions from like years that have been suppressed and they're bottled up. And they're like, wow, I'm actually being able to release them in this moment. And I tell them, okay, if the if you have nothing left to release before the timer is up, just honor the rest of the space that other people are releasing. It's only for four minutes, so it's not super long. And you can just be in a meditative state. And what I notice is that when they allow themselves to go through the cycle of releasing any negative or any any sort of emotion, and then they come back full circle where they're like, happy they are grounded they are fully in their power and they are fully feeling themselves and that is such a sexy space to be in that is so beautiful that is so powerful and it's so connected and then the person who was hosting them just then when the timer goes off they say thank you for their share and maybe give each other a hug if they feel called to they do not comment on anything else and they it's their turn it's their turn to emote and then they go through it and the person who just emoted they witness and they also hold space and so it becomes this co-creation of sisters supporting sisters and hosting each other and afterwards everyone you can feel the shift in the room everyone is like whoa like goosebumps like we just allowed ourselves to go into whatever darkness we needed to go to we came back 
we are okay, we are connected, we are feeling more fully in our power, we are feeling more fully a woman, because this is what it is to be born in, more predominantly in the feminine. And I think this is also powerful for men to do, and I see a lot of brotherhood circles doing this, but it's so amazing. I'm representing the women here, and this is like, I feel so strong about this, that this is something that we all need to do. And I'm not saying that you need to go around and scream and cry and do all this stuff all the time. I'm just saying every couple, once in a while, it's nice to cycle these emotions out of out of ourselves and to ask ourselves, what can we learn here? What can we learn from allowing ourselves to feel this full range? And then also in our circles, we dance, we do eye gazing, we do like sharing of our week, we share things that we're celebrating that we're like really proud of in our lives. Also something that is not accepted normally within sisters, because everyone's so worried about being competitive, or um, yeah, just wanting to make themselves small. And I'm like, no, we need to make ourselves big. Like, how big can we make ourselves? How much can we celebrate ourselves? How much can we say we're grateful for? How much can we say what we'd love more of? How much can we claim more of in our lives? And, you know, the women's circles that I host, they're only like two and a half hours long. It's not like a full day thing normally. But I see how much it shifts people. They're like, they come in one energy and they leave very much a different energy and a lot more empowered and a lot more connected and a lot more just like, I can do whatever I need to in my life. And I, I invite them to share in our group chat, like over the coming days, how they're integrating. And a lot of them say they don't actually realize the full, the full effect of the sisterhood until a couple of days later when they're in their job or they're out in the world. And they're just remembering this vibration of the togetherness and the connection and the power that we have when we come together. And I feel like more of these circles, more of these spaces, more of these energy bubbles need to be in the world. And this is why I'm sharing this because I invite all of you guys to do this. And it can start one by one when you're building. Like first off, in order for you to have your soul tribe and the sisterhood, you have to be your authentic self. You have to be willing, just like I am, to get in there and emote myself. Get in there and and be part of it, you know? And... You can build your sisterhood one person at a time by inviting people that you feel inspired by, that you feel connected to out for a cacao or a coffee or for the park walk or to do some yoga or anything that you enjoy, anything that brings you life. Invite them along with you and and to, you know, merge energy bubbles for a period of time and see how much you can inspire each other and how much you can connect and allow each other to feel your feelings. And it's so beautiful when someone shares and all you have to do is say thank you for sharing. So much of us go through our lives wanting to be witnessed in our journey. We don't necessarily want any feedback. We don't necessarily want anyone to try and fix it for us. That's a very masculine energy. We want someone to honor it and be like, you know, is there anything I can do to show up for you? Do you need anything right now? And you know, or just say thank you for sharing and let me know if I can be there for you and, and help you in your process. But the most important thing is to be there. I think I feel like a lot of times we hold ourselves back from connecting or asking someone how they're really doing because we have this masculine programming that we actually need to fix it. That if we're inviting it into our world, it means that we are now responsible to do something about it. And that is not true. When you're sharing with someone in a very feminine way so if you're a man listening to this and you're and your partner or your friend or whoever you're talking to that's a woman shares with you something that they're going through emotionally they don't want you to fix it and even us sisters and sisters we don't want each other to fix it this is such old programming that we can let go of we just want to be with each other we want to share the experience we want to know that we're still connected when we, even when we feel lost even when we don't know what's going on even when our emotions are overwhelming us we want to know that we are still okay. We want someone to be like, you're doing great. I'm proud of you. You're amazing. Is there anything I can do to show up for you? Do you want a hug? That is so powerful. That is so empowering when we can do this for each other. And I feel like men to men, this is also really empowering. And women to men, this is also really empowering to do this for the masculine. But I feel that it is going to start with women empowering women first. And any man who is listening to this, who is switched on to start doing this. Because the more that we can empower the feminine, the more the world will naturally shift for the better. 
I feel so strong about this. Like my hands are shaking. I'm like, I could talk about this for hours. It's just, it's, it's, it's like so in me that I'm like, this is the key. This is the answer. It's women rising up into their full power and taking up space in their lives. And I want to end this to reframe what I was saying in the beginning and just re re emphasize that the most important shift that you can do, if you're going to take anything from this podcast, like I hope you take a lot, but if you're going to take just one thing away, I invite you to be the main character in your own life. So that means that when you wake up in the morning, you ask yourself first, what do I want today? What do I desire? What brings me pleasure? What brings me pleasure in my life? What, what would I like to do? And you decide that trajectory first. Like everything is you in your independent individual bubble of pleasure, of enjoyment, of beauty in the world. And then you naturally, as women, as the feminine, we will co-create this and we will share this energy with our partners, with our family, with our friends. But the, f- the main trajectory, the main path that you need to be on is that you are the main character of your own life. Your emotional reality, your desires, your love, these are the things that matter the most. And when you are really honoring that, everything else falls into place. And this is something that I I really feel like like Faraday and I got together last November. We'd known each other for a year before that. But when we first started dating, we really went into this really strong love bubble. Like <laughs> I was even sending voice messages this morning to people that I was dating last summer. And I just like dropped off the face of the earth and didn't close it out in a conscious way. I mean, I told them that I, w- I didn't want to see them anymore, but it wasn't like, you know, let's, let's like, let's ground in this. And then a nice, I was just like, bye, <laughs> I'm in a love bubble. And, you know, and it was really beautiful. And we were co-creating our lives together. And then when I was going to go to Portugal last week for a festival that I've been planning since before Friday and I were together with my best friend, girlfriends, um, to the music that I love, which is Afrobeats and African music. And it was really important for me that I went on my own. And I remember Faraday, you know, we love each other so much. So he was like, are you sure you don't want me to come? And I was like, you don't, you may start liking this music. Maybe you like it when I play it. But like, this is music that I know by heart. This is music that I, it's like him with Crow. He loves this artist named Crow. And I want to go and have this as an experience for myself with my best girlfriends and just really allow myself to be the main character in my life in this moment. And that was such an interesting thing for me because in the past with other partners, I was like, bye. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't care. Like, I'm going to go. I'll see you later. I'll see you when I come back. And like, both of us were kind of like, yeah, whatever. But with Faraday, we love each other so much that it's like really interesting that I have to, it's an opportunity to keep reaffirming over and over again the more love that I allow into my life, into my heart, into my body, that I still am the main character in my life. And then I still am going to do the things that I love first. And Faraday supports that, honors it. And also, when I do that, 95% of the time, those things that I love, that I'm doing first for myself, involve him. And it's a co-creation with our lives together. And and it's beautiful, but there I'm doing them because I want to do them, not because I love him and I want to be with him and I want our lives to go. It's like, no, no, no. I'm doing this because I'm the main character of my life. He's doing this because he's the main character of his life. He's very good at this. The masculine has so much example and is encouraged in the world to do this. And they just do it very subconsciously. And we line up our lives and they happen to go together in a really beautiful way. And to me, that is the best co-creation, but it had to happen first with me deciding as in the feminine that I am the main character of my life and setting my path and following that path and then seeing if he, you know, lines up with it. And I think that this is such different programming than most women have. This is very different than how I used to be of waiting for the masculine to set the path and then following it. 
It's like, no, 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 this is a co-creation. In order for this to be a co-creation, the feminine needs to figure out what they want first, go after it or allow it to come in. We are receiving the energy of the feminine is we don't actually have to go after anything. We just decide what's amazing and we choose it and it is beautifully attracted to us. And there's way more I can say about that, but that's a whole other podcast. But just keep remembering that as the feminine, you are the muse, you are the inspiration, you are the beauty And this is not just in a physical way. This is in an energetic way. This is in you enjoying the pleasure and the yumminess of life. That energy is so activating to everyone around you. Women, man, dog, you know, whatever is in your vortex. They are attracted to that. They are only made more positive and uplifted because you are in your joy and you are following what feels good in your body. So keep doing that. Keep connecting to your body. Keep following what feels good for you and trust your body and trust your intuition. And remember that we are what gives birth to life. Thank you guys so much for listening to this podcast. Again, let me know how this is resonating, how this is sitting with you. Um, Faraday and I are going to be bouncing. We're doing a retreat next week in Austria. I'm very excited about it. Soul Tribe uniting and we are going to slowly make our way back to Copanyong this fall. I miss Afro, my dog, so much. I can't even speak about it or I might start crying. Um, and I'm so excited to be reunited with her. And the plan is when we come out next summer is to bring her with us. Um, and if you are interested in any coaching that I am doing, I do it over WhatsApp and it's really beautiful. I have it. I do it one week at a time and I have you send your questions over and I send you a really yummy voice message answer within 24 hours. So if you want more information about that, DM me on Instagram. And we have a course that we made about coming into your full power, becoming your authentic selves. And I, I, call it the new earth toolkit sometimes because it's like if you really want to get on this new earth vibration this is this is all the upgrades that you need in order to become fully awake drop into your body and have all the tools that you need in order to live your most epic timeline so that's on our website and i think it's attached to all of the podcasts that i do so you can click on that and check it out more (sighs) and just sending you all so much love and juicy yummy energy we are back in our nature spot it's funny because the last time I made a podcast was like two weeks ago in this exact same spot and then now I have gone to Portugal back to Germany and now we're back here in um, Czech Republic in nature Um, so everything always comes full circle and I'm just really excited I'm going to be making a lot more podcasts in the future and I've been getting a lot of amazing feedback from you guys so thank you for all the love and support and if you ever have any questions, you can always reach out. And if if you send a question to me, sometimes it activates me enough that I'll make a podcast about it. So always send them through. And yeah, sending you lots of love. Have a beautiful day. Bye.